Today, we're going to be diving into how documentation-driven development can help you slash your timelines on your software development projects. We're going to be kicking off a video series here where I'll be demonstrating some concepts and techniques using a real-world SaaS application. This is a funded SaaS platform that is for the um, H commercial HVAC space. It's already been designed, and I was going to get started on building the system. And I'm going to be using AI accelerated techniques that I've been having a lot of success with. And the feedback I've gotten is that I haven't provided the foundational material. And so that's what I'm going to start with in this video. I'm going to walk you through what I consider the three core skills that are essential to not only AI development, but just AI accelerated work in general, but critical, in my opinion, for AI accelerated development. And I've seen a lot of tools that are coming out that are starting to do some of these techniques as part of their workflow, like Kiro. So I just want to lay that foundation. Then we'll follow on with some additional videos where we'll start building an actual platform using these techniques. The combination of the series will allow you to learn these techniques and uh, increase your dev velocity with higher quality. So let's jump straight in. I want to start by asking what I consider to be uh, the question of our time. So I'm going to pull up my whiteboard here. And I think the big question is, you can have a software engineer for $20 a month. The catch is every time you start a task, you get a new engineer. Each engineer will um, write fast, they will code fast, they know the full history of the inter internet, they, uh, they also uh, can test and use command line. The catch is that uh, the more questions you ask them, the less accurate they get. And then that is coupled with the fact that they, um, if you ask them the same question twice, you'll get different answers. So they're non-deterministic, which is part of the power of them. But it's also, um, it can be challenging on a software project. So this is the setup here. This is what we've, the offer that's been made to all of us. And if you're watching this video, I would assume that you've taken this offer. So where do we go from here? This is our setup. So then I feel like this is just an engineering problem. And so that's the way I approached it is like, how do I solve this as an engineering problem? And so with an engineering problem, I like to start by saying, what is the goal of what I'm trying to accomplish, okay? So the goal here to me, let's give ourselves a modest goal. I want to increase my speed of development, spec speed with higher quality. A lot of people are just looking at AI and saying, it's not useful, I asked it to do something and it got it wrong. Take a step back and then look at what the question I'm posing here is, or the setup, $20 a month, that's a bargain. And you've got essentially an engineer that has these characteristics that you can take advantage of. Surely you can accomplish this goal um, with, um, with that setup. So that said, how do we go, how do we get started? And, and um, what do we need to do to accomplish this goal? The first thing you want to do is get in the right mindset. And like I said, the best way, in my opinion, to think about this is that the AI agent is an employee. And to with an employee, when you hire an employee, you have to onboard them. So with these AI agents, what you have to do is if you want to be able to keep them where they are writing fast and coding fast with high accuracy, what you have to do is you have to basically shut down your agent and spin it back up. And you could kind of think about it like your agent is not a full-time employee, but a temp employee. And once they start getting slow, you just fire them and hire a new one. When you do that, that's going to allow you to get your hallucination rate down and increase the quality of what you're doing. So then 
what happens when you hire a new employee? Like we said, we have to be able to onboard them quickly. And when you're hiring employees in your real life and you want to onboard them, if you have a better onboarding process, that generally means you have things documented. So that's where this whole concept for me of documentation-driven development has kind of emerged from. So what does that actually look like? What it looks like is um, when you're onboarding someone, a developer, and, and if you're onboarding them multiple times a day, which you will when you're using these approaches, then what does that onboarding look like, right? What are the questions we have to answer or things they need to understand? So the way I see it, it's not that complicated. You need to understand how to build, I'm sorry, what to build. This is what I want you to build for me. I need to explain to you how to build it because we have standards and we have preferences and opinions. Uh, and so with especially considering that if I ask you the same question twice, I could likely get a different approach, a different answer. We need consistency, right? That's the heart of having good code quality. One of the big concepts is just having a consistent, cohesive approach. Then another thing that you need to do is let them know when they're done. So how do you know when you're done? So if you can do these things well, that leads into the first of the core skills that I was mentioning earlier. So I said that there were three core skills that you need to have, right? And so the first core skill is context management. And what I mean by that is that you need to be able to very quickly answer these two questions right here. What to build and how to build. This one right here, I would say is optional, but is definitely, in my opinion, the holy grail. If you really want your AI development to go really fast, then if you give the agent a way to know it got the answer right, then it'll keep going until it figures it out. So, th so that's the holy grail as far as I see it. Now, let's talk about the next problem that you can have when you're doing AI development. I've I've talked I've mentioned it, but the hallucinations is a is a problem, right? And so, what does the hallucination mean? That means uh, the answer is just wrong. So it's just a wrong answer. Um, and we have to circle back to our goals. Our goal is to increase our speed by two x, while while having higher quality. Now, if we spend all of our time reviewing these wrong answers, then the ROI is not going to be there. We won't get our 2x. So how do we avoid that from happening? Because if we ask the agent to go and write some code and it writes all this code um, and we don't like the code and we have to do it 20 times before it gets a good answer, that took longer than... Um, longer to do than if I would have just written the code myself, which is a complaint that you hear from senior developers. Well, that's the second skill that you have to develop when you're doing AI accelerated work is accelerating your validation loop. So what I mean by that is you have to develop the skill of being able to work with the AI tools to quickly get to a point where it can create a lot of content for you, whether it's code and documentation, but that you don't have to spend a ton of time reading every idea the agent has because it has a lot of bad ones. So I will show you how I've approached this problem. And it's honestly, in my opinion, pretty easy to solve. And so then what is the last skill? I said there was three core skills that you needed to have. And the third skill, and this is something, uh, my background, I have a hybrid offshore development agency. And that means my teams are in India, which means I have about one to two hours a day to talk to the teams. They're very high velocity teams. And, but for us to get to where we could have that little communication, that high of velocity, 
we had to come up with really good processes and we got there by evolving the processes. So you need to um, be able to evolve your development processes at a high rate of speed because what you'll see as we go through these videos is that what you're doing is you're no longer, you're going to stop writing code. You're going to be managing a developer who writes code and you've now become a software manager. And when you're a manager, it's all about, especially if you don't, if you take the emotional intelligence out of it, you're not having to, uh, you know, inspire and motivate. You're just having to essentially micromanage then having really tight processes that you can evolve quickly is going to get it so that your agent is moving really fast and making less mistakes. And so these are the core concepts, and this is what I'm going to be diving into in the next video. We're going to take a look at these three core skills, context management, accelerating val your validation loops, and evolving processes, all while building a real SaaS platform at a speed that I think will be much higher than what you're used to if you're writing code by hand. Anyway, I'm looking forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks for joining.